One year ago, we were here talking about Intel's Coffee Lake chips, and now they are back with the 9th gen core Intel chips, also called the Coffee Lake Refresh. The first Coffee Lake brought us Intel's first six core mainstream processors, and now the Refresh is launching with the i9-9900K, an eight core processor that can boost up to a whopping five gigahertz speed. These chips will almost certainly be fast, but their launch has also been marred by some shady benchmarks and confusing branding. Plus, do gigahertz even matter anymore? So what's going on here? For starters, these chips are now the fourth generation of Intel desktop chips based on the Skylake architecture, which first launched in 2015, and the fifth line of chips to be built on Intel's now venerable 14 nanometer process. We were supposed to see a wider release of new processors built on a 10 nanometer process this year, but they've been delayed. Same as last year, and same as every year since 2015. Considering a new manufacturing process is one of the ways companies typically boost efficiency and speed, we're not gonna see any miracles here. However, these delays are forcing Intel to compete on core count. And in the past 18 months, we've seen eight core chips become the standard for enthusiast hardware, which is great news for gamers and content creators. The other distinguishing feature of the i9-9900K is its five gigahertz boost speed. And we are giving you five gigahertz out of the box. With the exception of the limited release i7-8086, this is the first Intel chip to hit these speeds out of the box. Clock speed used to be one of the most important metrics for chip performance. Around the year 2000 and the era of the Pentium 4, Intel clock speeds were increasing at a frantic rate, doubling from 1.4 gigahertz at the end of 2000 to 3.06 gigahertz two years later. Intel predicted we'd hit 10 gigahertz by 2011 and that speeds would only go up from there. Is your PC powerful enough for the new digital world? A world Pentium. There were just two problems. The first was that as the Pentium 4s crept towards four gigahertz, they got hot, really hot. As speeds go up, power consumption and heat go up faster to the point where chips can become unstable or even fried. And without a way to manage the heat, clock speeds stalled. The other big problem was that AMD's Athlon 64 chips were outperforming the Pentiums at half the clock speed. Get the AMD advantage because AMD processors are built for multitasking. It turns out that raw speed is only part of the equation in making a really fast chip. Unable to compete on gigahertz, AMD focused on efficiency and multitasking, moving some components from the motherboard to the CPU to shorten latencies, and switching to a 64-bit architecture, and ultimately producing the first multi-core CPUs. AMD's Athlon chips ran much slower than the Pentiums, typically around two or two and a half gigahertz. But despite these slow speeds, they could get more done in the same amount of time. Think of it this way. If you're moving to a new place across town, how long it takes you to get all your stuff there matters more than the top speed you hit en route. And in that analogy, AMD was a U-Haul truck with a GPS. Sluggish, but it took a good route and it could move a lot in one trip. Intel was a Ferrari with no trunk space and a driver who refused to ask for directions. A few years later, the equation flipped as AMD struggled with the first real five gigahertz chip, the FX9590, a honking beast of a processor that needed 220 watts to run, but couldn't keep pace with Intel's 3.6 gigahertz i7-4960X. The move towards efficiency and multitasking is now the standard in computing, with both companies using a similar playbook. Intel generally has a slight lead in instructions per clock, meaning that at a given speed, its processors are generally faster, and it clocks them a little bit higher. But AMD gives you more cores and is better at multitasking. And this is part of what makes the i9-9900K appealing. It combines high clock speeds with a ton of cores. It's also the first time in our mainstream family that we will have an eight core, 16 thread processor. So what's actually new here? Well, aside from having eight cores, not a ton. The flagship ninth gen chip is going to be the i9-9900K, and it's essentially last year's six core i7-8700K with two more cores, a slightly lower base speed of 3.6 gigahertz, and a higher boost speed 
at 5 GHz, though that is only on two cores at a time. This speed is probably made possible by Intel soldering the processor directly to the heat spreader, which is the metal lid over the chip. Intel used to do this, but since 2012, they've instead used cheaper thermal paste, which drove overclockers nuts, as the general belief is paste doesn't dissipate heat as well as solder. This feature set also makes the naming convention a little odd. i9 has only existed as a product category since 2017 as sort of a high-performance chip in between the consumer-focused i7 and the business-focused Xeon line. Until the i9-9900K, every other desktop i9 had a few things in common. They had 10 cores or more, support for 128 gigabytes of RAM, and 44 PCI lanes for hooking up multiple graphics cards or tons of high-speed storage. The 9900K has none of these things, though it's supposed to be getting 128 gig memory support after launch. It still seems like it'll be a super fast chip, but with all these things missing, is it really an i9? It's irritating, because as strange as Intel's naming strategies can be, they had a logic to them. The i7s came with the highest speeds and hyperthreading, which improves performance in some applications like video rendering. The i5s had the same number of cores as the i7s, but were a little slower and had no hyperthreading. And then the i3 was a little slower again and had fewer cores. Now it's all kind of a mess. If we have an i9 that's really an i7 and an i5 that's really an i3, and well, you get the idea. It remains to be seen if this new naming scheme is gonna continue with future processors. Maybe we'll also end up with an i1 and an i11. But for now, just make sure you know what you're actually buying. And it can be a little hard to know what you're getting because these current chips have arrived with some controversy. Intel hired a firm called Principled Technologies to run gaming benchmarks on the 9900K and AMD's Ryzen 2700X, another eight core processor. And the results were a little fishy. The i9 showed a commanding performance lead of around 50% in most games, but it came out that the AMD chip was tested using its default cooler, while the i9 was paired with a Noctua U14S, a high-end third-party CPU cooler. This is meaningful because both chips are designed to run as fast as their cooling solutions will allow. With better cooling, the chips can stay at their boost frequencies longer, drawing more power and running faster until they inevitably start to overheat and slow down to keep stable. Furthermore, the AMD chip was run with game mode enabled. Now, that might seem to make sense, but game mode was actually developed for AMD's Threadripper chips, which cram a dozen or more cores into the processor. In most games, performance can actually suffer with that many cores, as the system can end up with longer latency and delays as it tries to route commands through the complicated chip, which can slow things down. As a solution, game mode turns off half the cores. The problem here is that the 2700X used in testing only has eight cores, which is not enough to cause these kind of problems. So essentially, the test ended up being an Intel chip with great cooling versus half of an AMD chip with okay cooling. And all of this is odd because everyone already expected the 9900K to be the faster chip. This product, our baby, best gaming processor in the world. Period. When after the outcry, the tests were rerun with a more equitable setup, the Intel chip was still faster, though now only by about 15%. It's also a bizarre test because gaming is generally not the best way to show the performance of a multi-core CPU. These days, games rely much more on graphics performance and generally don't do a great job distributing their CPU work over that many cores. Streaming or media rendering will probably end up being a better test, and that's where the i9 may really shine. From the benchmarks we've seen, the 9900K does get a slight edge in games, but it depends a lot on the title. Don't get us wrong, it's still generally the fastest gaming chip you can buy, but in a lot of cases, it's only faster by about 10%, and at resolutions beyond 1080p, your graphics card is going to make a much bigger difference than your CPU. Content creation is a little trickier. Again, the 9900K is fast, but it's generally about 10 to 20% quicker than the AMD 2700X, a chip which is currently only $300 versus the 9900K at 580. If budget isn't an issue and you want the most speed possible, the 9900K is the clear choice. Otherwise, you may have to decide how much is that five gigahertz really worth to you?
Thank you.